Which visual effects will occur as a result of laser exposure depends how much energy strikes the eye. As mentioned earlier, this depends on the power of the laser, how much the beam spreads out, how far away the laser is, and very importantly, whether it is day or night. Let's look at these effects. The first effect is the sudden appearance of a bright light. Let's see that again. Note that the runway is still visible. However, an event like this when unexpected may cause a startle response that can distract a pilot, even if the light is not bright enough to cause significant glare. Also, the fact a bright light appeared unexpectedly may generate fear that an even brighter light may be coming. In this example, the light is being flashed intermittently. This is typical of most laser strikes on cockpits because as we showed earlier, it is very difficult to maintain a small beam on a small moving target at long distances. The visual effects of a laser are many times greater at night. In this footage taken inside the FAA 737 simulator, we see that during daytime, even a bright laser that is on continuously does not significantly impair vision and the pilot is able to continue with his takeoff. However, most laser incidents occur in the evening, so we will continue with our effects examples taken in a night situation. As laser intensity increases, glare can become a problem. Glare is an obscuration of vision that is like a veil of light placed over part of the visual scene. Glare is present only while the laser is on. The amount of area obscured will depend on the intensity of the laser light. It will also depend on its color. As stated before, green light is more effective than red or blue light in stimulating the visual system. Therefore, a green laser of the same power as a red laser will create more glare. As laser intensity and glare increase, a point is reached where the eye can no longer respond normally when the laser is turned off. The result is a phenomenon called flash blindness. Flash blindness is a temporary loss of vision that continues after a laser is turned off. After the exposure, there is an after image that varies in size and duration depending on the level of exposure and color of the laser. The effect is similar to what occurs after exposure to a camera flash, only it can be much greater in magnitude and duration. Even so, recovery time of functional vision is usually rapid. The after images lose strength quickly and can be seen through even though they may persist for several minutes. This illustrates safety distances for the visual effects from a green laser pointer of maximum legal power of 5 milliwatts. As you can see, it is extremely unlikely that a pointer could cause eye damage. The pointer would have to be within 50 feet of the pilot and maintained in focus on one spot on the retina for several seconds. Even though damage is unlikely, a laser pointer can produce the other visual effects at significant distances. The effects vary with range, with the strongest effect, flash blindness, occurring at the closest range. Are common pointers the only laser threat? Unfortunately, the answer is no. There are more powerful laser devices that are handheld and look very similar to regular pointers. These devices are not in the same class as laser pointers and are required in the U.S. to have safety features regular laser pointers do not. Some handheld lasers available on the open market are 100 times more powerful than the average laser pointer. They are also more expensive, but unfortunately, as technology improves, the prices are dropping. A recent ad for a 400 milliwatt handheld laser listed the price at $900. Although they are typically marketed for professional use, they are available to anyone who has the money to pay for them. How can I tell I am being illuminated by a laser? The most obvious distinction is that the laser light is of one bright color. The most common colors are green and red as shown here. In contrast, searchlights, spotlights, and landing lights of other aircraft are white in appearance. Besides educating pilots, the FAA and the Department of Defense are also conducting research to better understand laser effects on pilot performance and to develop procedures to minimize the effects. Working together, they have outfitted a 737 simulator with both red and green lasers that track realistically as the aircraft maneuvers. All of the in-the-cockpit scenes in this video were shot in this simulator. The outcome of this research has discovered that pilots subjected to laser events quickly learn the extent of the visual effects from exposures and how to work around them, even in the most challenging flight situations. 
The FAA, working with the DOD, is also exploring the possible use of laser eye protection, or LEP, in commercial aviation. Military pilots already wear LEP in laser hazard areas. LEP can block one or more wavelengths of laser light. Here the LEP filter removes the green light, as seen in the upper right part of the pilot's windscreen. The second filter blocks the red laser and has a different effect on the displays. Drawbacks to wearing LEP is that it makes the outside scene darker and alters the appearance of the cockpit's instrumentation and symbology. However, as shown here, despite the visual penalties, wearing laser eye protection may be a viable alternative to attempting other strategies to cope with the strike. A couple of things that the pilot should uh, remember when they're illuminated at a uh, laser illumination is do not rub your eyes. Do not look into the beam. That's in areas that you can immediately help resolve some of the problem. If you can't look away from it, shield your eyes. Look down at your flight instruments. Turn your background lights up. This is a problem that some pilots have experienced to where they have been illuminated, they haven't been able to shield their eyes quickly enough, and they haven't been able to see their background lights on their uh, instruments. Don't leave them down, turn them up. Some of the things you do want to do is get your autopilot on, communicate with the other pilot to transfer control of the aircraft and to ascertain you know, which one has the best visibility at the time. Make sure that you've contacted the tower. Make sure that you have control space for you to go fly into while you're resolving your vision impairment problems. And also check uh, your aircraft because during this time of the visual uh, impairment, you may have been in a turn or in an unusual uh, uh, configuration to where you may have lost your airspeed or you may have climbed up or you may have descended rapidly and you want to be able to reestablish the normal profile of the airplane. So this is why it's important to get your autopilot on so it'll help restabilize the airplane while you're checking out what are the configurations that the aircraft is in now and what you want to return it to. So do make sure that you communicate and communications is probably one of the most important things you can do. There will always be new challenges to overcome to ensure flight safety. Becoming aware of laser illuminations has become one of them. Laser illuminations should not evoke startle and the information in this video should be used to guide an appropriate response. Help the FAA by reporting these incidents per the FAA Advisory Circular 70-2. Additional information may be obtained from these web addresses listed on the screen. Yeah, we were on about a 10-mile final. That was definitely bright green and trying to get our attention. 